What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge. This story's called, X cheated on me and falsely accused me of a uh, violation of a horrible manner, so I exposed her to everyone she knew. In late May 2016, I asked my crush, Kate, of three years out on a coffee date. Three dates later, we made things official. For the next seven months, our relationship felt too good to be true. We clicked on so many interests, so we hardly ever disagreed on anything. We were very open with each other, which led to an incredible sex life. We both had good jobs, so we had money to spoil one another, and both our families were enthusiastic about our relationship. In January 2017, I was accepted into my country's Armed Forces Reserve Program as a combat engineer. I underwent basic training from February to late April, and was up until then the hardest thing I had ever done. There were several times I thought I wouldn't graduate, and the only the only thing that kept me going was Kate's words of encouragement over texts and calls. She was there when I received my BTC certificate and never let me forget how proud she was of me. As part of my job in the reserves, I would have to go away in the summer for advanced training. Between early June to late August, Kate fully supported me going 400 kilometers away to the training center and spending almost our entire summer break on work to further my military career. The summer was brutal on me. I was a social outcast from every clique that formed on our course, and was the butt of several jokes. My self-esteem plummeted through the floor, but Kate's belief in me was what made me prevail. I passed as fifth best on the course, and I owed it all to her, the decline. Things between us started to sour after returning home. According to her, I wasn't as spontaneous and outgoing as before I went away. I was dismissive, took small jabs and jokes as personal insults, and would rather stay in, watch movies, and have sex instead of going out. Unbeknownst to both of us, I had developed some nasty social anxiety due to the events of the summer, and it started affecting our relationship. Nearing our two-year anniversary in 2018, we got into a heated argument over a small misunderstanding, and subsequently broke up. I was incredibly distraught before she texted me three days later and said she wanted to try and fix things. I didn't see her for three weeks, but we kept in touch every day, slowly mending things. When we officially got back together, nothing felt the same. Every time I talked with her, it was as if I was walking on eggshells, and it only worsened my anxiety, which in turn hurt our already damaged relationship. Then things finally came to a head at the end of of July. The Hurt. While in school, Kate had met a dude named John. She saw in John what she used to see in me, and they quickly became very close friends. He consoled her through our breakup and every little time I messed up afterwards. For the record, I knew of John but never thought Kate would ever do anything with him. One night after work, we had planned for me to stay the night at Kate's place. I arrived to see the two of them chilling on the living room couch. Kate said that John had dropped by for a spontaneous visit and he was just leaving. After John left, she became cold and distant. I slowly accepted that our relationship was dead and asked her how things were between us. She echoed my thoughts and we agreed to break up the next day. She said I could stay the night one last time, seeing how late it was and she was still worryful of me. From there on until she fell asleep, Kate became uncharacteristically glued to and protective of her phone. In the past, she wouldn't care if I had glanced over to catch her and her friends texting about whatever, but now she did her best to hide the screen from me. I asked her about it and she said it was private stuff, which only raised more questions. After she fell asleep, curiosity got the better of me. I unlocked her phone, I knew her passcode, and found hundreds of messages between her and John. Messages about how she was now single, how exciting it was that they could now be a couple in public, and laughing at me about every little thing I did. I quietly sobbed as I read through each hurtful text. My crying wasn't as quiet as I thought. Kate stirred, and once she realized what I was doing, she threw a fit. I couldn't find the anger or words to combat her, so I just grabbed my stuff and left. 
with Kate shouting and yelling at me the whole time. It was late in the morning when I got home. I just broke down and ugly cried all night. I called in sick from work the next day and spent it sulking in my bed. The day after, I got several angry texts from Kate's friends and family. In a bid to save her image and denounce anything I might say about her, she told everyone she knew that I had forced myself upon her that night in one last attempt to get some before we broke up and left after the deed was done. Though what I had done was scarring, she refused to press charges because she didn't want to make a circus of her life in court and was the bigger person by doing so. So I spent the next few months in fear that her allegation would have me discharged from the army and my image forever tarnished. Yikes. The revenge. Five months afterwards, Kate DM'd me. After pleasantries, she basically apologized for the whole thing and actually admitted to faking it, though she would never publicly admit it to save her own reputation. My image be damned. This angered me, but I kept cool. I screenshot the text and continued talking with her. Over the next three months, she entered into a cycle of events as follows. Complain about current life situation, usually about John screwing up in their relationship in one way or another, and asking for advice. Lamenting our relationship, how I never screwed up like John did, how she wished we could go back to the way things were, blah blah blah, ignoring me because John finally pulled his head out out of his ass, did some huge romantic gesture and saved their relationship, going on a smear campaign on social media about our relationship, employing her friends for help, knowing in full that I would see it all and trying to bait me into an argument. It would work, she would try to turn the argument around and paint me as the bad guy, and then block me for about a month before repeating the cycle. This happened three times like clockwork work and always left me burnt out and broken but a part of me wanted it to happen. Each time it did, I took screenshots of every damning thing she said. I had a full SD card of everything I compiled before I finally decided it was time, making several picture copies of the worst of the worst text messages I caught. I bought several manila envelopes and mailed them to everyone I thought it would matter to Kate. Her parents, grandparents, extended family she was super close with, best friends, friends, work boss, co-workers, teachers, whoever I could find a mailing address for. I made sure that anyone getting the envelope would know that the texts were between me and Kate and sent them off. Within three weeks, I got results. Some of the people who messaged me to shame and insult me before now apologized for their words. My favorite was from her own parents, who went on to say that they were deeply sorry about their daughter's behavior, how they raised her to be better than how she acted and to please not pursue any legal actions. The thought had crossed my mind, but I didn't have the money nor the mental fortitude to fight a legal battle. I told them I'd think about it and that they'd be the first to know besides Kate if I did. Kate sent me some texts as well with things like, How could you betray my trust like that? Or, You ruined my life, you bastard! I didn't reply. I just read every angry text that flew in with a satisfied grin and then blocked her when they stopped. I never fully found out how badly her life was affected by my revenge, but I do know that she dropped out of school and no longer has a job. I hope John was worth it. Um, okay. While I definitely don't condone, uh, going through someone's phone without their knowledge, uh, I, I, I condone cheating even less. So we're at a weird situation where one screwed up thing helps you discover the presence of an even more screwed up thing, which is isn't as bad as it could be. But it's all good, OP. You'll find a non-scummy woman to live a happy life with, with hopefully less uh, prominent social anxiety. All right, guys, here we have a story called Dine and Dash Diva Gets What She Deserves. Whoa, hold up. 
Hold up, let's take a second to appreciate that alliteration. Oh yeah. My group of friends have been together for quite some time, at least starting from the end of middle school. The majority of us ended up going to the same college, so good for us. Anyway, one of our friends has been acting unreasonably and starting drama for fun. It's been slowly building up for about a year. Now, gossip and rumors we can deal with because we know each other and we can usually pick the truth from the lies easily. At the point of her rumor spreading, we distance ourselves from her quite a bit. Her latest antics have been much different. For the sake of this story, her name can be D. In our area, cases have been low, so we've started to go out more with the whole gang. Extra precautions aside, things Things look to be normal. We eat at a semi-formal restaurant, as is our custom. There's something about dressing up and treating ourselves is something we try to do as much as we can financially permit. Things seem fine until the bill comes and it's time for each of us to settle up. Dee starts to get shifty and starts tapping at her phone. She stands up quickly and says she needs to go. It's an emergency. She fast walks out of the dining room and out of sight. We try to text and call after, but no answer. We end up all absorbing her part of the bill. A one-time favor for a friend in need, right? The second part of our routine is to go to the host's house, where we drink, watch movies, and have a good time. Callie was to be the host this time. We're not much for gossip, but Dee's odd behavior mixed with her previous antics got us on the topic. All six of us shared some stories, and it looks like every one of us had some personal run-in with our friend. The second time we all go out to dinner, everything seems well. We ordered a lot of mixed drinks and seemed thoroughly tipsy. Foolishly, we believed she would pay her tab this time. Before the waiter could even bring up how we wanted to split the bill, Dee ex excused herself to the bathroom and did not return. We all have jobs along with scholarships, so thankfully, money isn't our primary worry. However, last time's bill paired with Dee's inflated dinner and alcohol tab would set us collectively back about $300. Reluctantly, we paid, although we didn't see her. It was assumed that she drove home drunk. We rendezvoused to the host place, very annoyed and in no mood to party. Again, D refuses our calls and does not open our messages. We busy ourselves by trying to get in touch with some of D's other friends. Through the mishmash of conversation, it was revealed that D was receiving a stipend from her father that she was saving to buy herself a new Tesla. Not only did she have a job, but she was getting free money from her dad. There was no reason for her to not pay her bills. I guess she thought this way she could get her Tesla faster. We had collectively been fed up with her crap. Since all of us felt burned, we decided to plan some revenge. We knew she had the cash, she just didn't feel obliged to hold her weight. At this point, we were all waking up to how entitled she could be. Our sense of loyalty and nostalgia had blinded us for way too long. Today was the day. We decided to go to a very nice restaurant today, about twice the prices of what we would normally do. Dee looked so excited, bless her. We all ate, drank, and had a great time. Dee had ordered many drinks and was drunk again. We were careful not to wait too long or Dee would dash, so just as dessert was over and the prospect of after-dinner coffee was being thrown around, we all declared that we had a surprise for Dee. Next month was her birthday, so we thought it would be a reasonable enough enough time to use it as an excuse for her to close her eyes. Dee did as she was told, and was instructed not to open her eyes until we said so, because the gift takes a minute to set up. We all got up, quietly filed out of the restaurant, and left her there with her eyes closed. Just as we were pulling out of the parking space, we all took one car to save time after our escape. Dee took her own car as usual. We saw Dee running out the door, searching wildly for us. She caught sight of the car, just just as we rolled away, middle fingers arise. Our phones were blowing up like crazy, tons of vile messages following the calls. I got to thinking, the bill
bill must have totaled around $700-ish for everyone. We would have never picked this place normally, although the food was very good. The rest of the gang headed to my apartment. About 30 minutes later, we each received a message saying we owed her $738.17, along with a photo of the bill. She had the audacity to include her part of the bill in that amount as well, and judging by the receipt, she gave no tip. Classy. I replied with this message. Guess you'll have to dip into your Tesla fund. <laughs> Take an Uber home before you lose your scholarship and your friends. Boozer. We know you can afford it. To say she went crazy is an understatement. She went coconuts. She tore us a new one on Twitter, blocked us, then unblocked us to rip us some more, then blocked us again. Now, Kelly, who has an alt Snapchat account, is treating us to her near psychotic rants talking about fake whores who never did anything for her. I guess that's us. Maybe next time she'll learn to pay for herself like an adult. Edit. I made a comment about this, but it got buried. We will be finding the waiter and tipping him generously. We aren't gonna let D's stinginess affect his bottom line. Well, that's very nice of ya. Um, because I'm pretty sure he was really excited for that tip. Also, pretty good revenge. Um, I just had sushi, so I'm in a good mood. And this, this revenge is pretty good. Pretty good, man. All right, this story's called, You'll Call the Police on Me for Doing My Job? Okay. Quick background. I, male, work for an exterior remodeling company. When we do an install in an area, it's my job to knock on everyone's door and schedule free estimates. I'm working a neighborhood in Maryland when your typical high-class Karen pulls up in a black Lexus and tells me this is a no-soliciting neighborhood. I tell her we have a license and show it to her. She starts screaming about how she's on the homeowners association and orders me to leave the neighborhood. Being the young professional I am, I tell her which way I'm going and that if security wants to talk to me, they can find me down that way. She loses it, starts calling me names, and follows me on my path through the neighborhood. Forget security, I'm calling the police! Great, I'm going down this way, I say. Police pull up, talk to me, check my license, slap Karen with a fine for disturbing the peace. I set four appointments and made over $1,000 that day. In other news, a security guard pulled up later that day and asked what was up. I told him I was from the fire department and he said to have a nice day. That's gotta be so annoying, just trying to do your job and having to deal with people like that. Come on, Karen, let me be what you are not, which is a productive member of society. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.